Greetings, everyone. This is Fred Coulter. Welcome to Church at Home. Church at Home is sponsored by the Christian Biblical Church of God and is devoted to proclaiming the truth of Jesus Christ, the truth of the Bible, and the restoration of the original teachings of the apostles in the New Testament. And today we're confronted with many enemies within and without. We are confronted with a movement to amalgamate all religions into a one world system. And now we are finding that there were secret agents who have infiltrated various churches, various theological seminaries, and who are perverting the Word of God, who are changing it, who are denying Christ, denying His divinity, denying who he is, and yet they like to take the name of Christian. It's much like Lloyd Gearing wrote in his book that he entitled Christianity Without God. Now, you can't have that. Now, let's come to the book of Jude, short book, no chapters, just verses, and let's see what he wrote because, you see, history repeats itself. And there were those in the time of Jude, and Jude was one of the brothers of Jesus. And there was the beginning subversion of the church and the truth of Christianity at that time. And of course, that is carried down to this day. Now, in the Bible that we have produced, we have a commentary on how the New Testament was canonized. And there you will find that everything that is taught in the seminaries is basically wrong. It was canonized by the Apostle John with the help of Andrew and Philip, and it wasn't waited until 300 years later by word of mouth to write it down. No, the apostles themselves wrote it down. Jude wrote this. Let's read what he says, because the message is pertinent for today. For certain men have stealthily crept in, those who long ago have been written about, condemning them to this judgment, the judgment that God has for the ungodly. They are ungodly men who are perverting the grace of our God, turning it into licentiousness, and are personally denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. Then a little later he says, Woe to them, for they have walked in the way of Cain. What is the way of Cain? You ignore the instructions of God, and you do it your way, and you come to God and expect him to bless you in your way, which is sin, and God doesn't accept it. And people get mad and angry, just like Cain did. Let's try one on for size. Everybody knows that December 25th, so-called Christmas Day, is not when Jesus was born but how many millions participate in it and think they're Christian. Let's try another shoe on for size. How about Easter? Everybody knows that it's filled with paganism, and it honors a female goddess called Ishtar, or Easter. Yet all of those who are Christians participate in it. How can they be Christian? They are not. See, the truth is, you have to come to God His way, not your way. Is your opinion greater than God's? Now, we've got a book here that you need to write for, called Holidays or God's Holy Days, which, which goes through and shows and tells you why the Christian world today is amalgamating toward one large 
world pagan religion. Because Christianity today is pagan, not Christian. Did you know that? Probably not. And then you need this other book we've just recently produced called, Lord, What Should I Do? Because the Christian church is falling apart. Where is God? Who is God? Well, we just read of it here. It's coming apart because they, are, they have been rejecting Christ. They have been rejecting the word of God. What do you expect God to do when ministers stand in the pulpit and say, the Old Testament has been fulfilled and done away? The law has been done away. When Jesus said, do not think that I've come to destroy the law or the prophets. I did not come to destroy or abolish, but to fulfill. That is, make it full. Make it more binding. What happens to churches when they reject the word of God, when they reject the truth of God, when they will not come to God the way that God says? Now, how are you to come before God? Humble, repentant, willing, obedient, wanting to love God, believing God, understanding that every word of God is true. Now, men have tried to change it around, and that's all part of the way of Cain. But as we will see as we go along in this series, there are true Christians. There are those who look to the word of God as divinely inspired and given God's message to mankind. As a matter of fact, the Bible is a personal message from God to you. Now, if you have a Bible in your home and you haven't picked it up to read it, well, you might do yourself a great favor by starting to do so. Don't leave it to the priest because he's not going to save you. Don't leave it to the pastor because he's not God. Don't leave it to the denomination that you attend because they can't save you. Only God can. Now, when you approach God, if you do not do it in the way that God says, if you do it in the way of accepting traditions of men, you're never going to find God. Because God is not in the traditions of men. And in fact, the Bible shows that the traditions of men reject God. Now, let's see what Jesus himself said. Jesus knew it would be this way. And it's been this way for centuries. Now, let's pick it up here in Matthew 13. Now, here's quite an incredible statement by Jesus himself. The apostles came to him and said, Lord, now why do you speak to the people in parables? Now, you would think, because that's the way it's taught, Jesus came to save all men at that time. And every denomination has been busy out there with missionaries and evangelizing and preaching, trying to get as many people saved as possible. And if you don't come to a particular church or that denomination, you go to hell and burn forever. You know, that understanding is not in the Bible. But let's see what Jesus said. You need to ask yourself the question, am I willing to do what Jesus said? We'll find out what he requires. So here's the answer he gave his disciples, verse 13. He says, for this reason, I speak to them in parables, because seeing they see not, and hearing they hear not, neither do they understand. They don't want to do God's will. They want God to bless them in their sins. They want God to bless them in their activities. So here's what happens. Verse 14, And in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah, which says, In hearing you shall hear, and no way understand. And seeing you shall see, and no way perceive. For the heart of this people has grown fat, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes they have closed, 
lest they should see with their eyes and should hear with their ears and should understand with their hearts and should be converted, and I should heal them. Oh, you believe Jesus said that? What's recorded right here? It's a prophecy from Isaiah 29. So let's go back and read that. Now, are you willing to love God with all your heart, mind, and soul and being? Are you willing to serve God the way he says? Are you willing to believe the truth of Jesus Christ as he spoke it, as the apostles recorded it? Well, it's just written by men. Well, let me ask you a question, several questions. Do you believe that God is almighty? Yes. Do you believe that God can cause a man to write the truth? Well, not really. All right, let me ask you another question. Have you ever read the account of Balaam and Balak and the cursing of the children of Israel? Now, Balak hired Balaam to come and curse. Now, here's a prophet dedicated to cursing, even taking great sums of money to curse. God made him bless instead of curse. And here was a man dedicated to evil. Don't you suppose that since the New Testament was written by eight men, that God could control or inspire them if they love God and love the truth to write the truth? Of course he can. And furthermore, when you understand it, only 40 men were involved in writing the whole Bible. So yes, God inspired them to write the truth. But you see, the thing is, people don't want the truth. Do you want the truth, or do you want your way? Do you want another Jesus? What is it that you want? See, because it's all coming down the pike. Do you want to be a true Christian in this world today? Now, if you do, it's going to be a difficult proposition. But if you love God and are willing to serve him, and to do what he says, rather than go to God and tell him what you will do for him, does God need your help? Let's read it here. Here's the prophecy, verse 8, Isaiah 29. And it shall even be as when a hungry one dreams, and behold, he eats. So he's eating in his dream. But he awakes, and his soul is empty. Or as when a thirsty man dreams, and behold, he drinks when he awakes. He is faint, and his soul is longing. So shall it be with the multitude of all the nations that fought against Zion. And this is talking about the end time when the whole world government and the whole world religion is coming. Amazing, isn't it? They're going to be blinded and not know the truth. They're going to be totally worshiping Satan, the devil, and thinking they are worshiping God. Now, you go back and go through the series that we did on prophecies in the New Testament, and especially the sections going through the book of Revelation. Now, let's continue with the prophecy in Isaiah 29. Be stunned and amazed, blind your eyes and be blind. They are drunk, but not with wine. They stagger, but not with strong drink. For the Lord has poured out upon you the spirit of deep sleep and has closed your eyes and has covered the eyes of your rulers and your seers. That's what God does. If you don't love God and believe him and believe his truth, he'll close your eyes. You won't understand. No one's going to come to God any other way but that his way. And even if they read the Bible, if they don't rightly divide the word of God and speak the truth the way that God wants it spoken, they won't understand. Just like we read last time of this man, God say, who though being a Baptist theologian is now embracing all the religions of the world and saying, why, there's more than one way to God. He's blinded. All of those who believe him are blinded. 
Now they say, okay, pick up the Bible and read it. Well, you can pick up the Bible and read it, but if you're not willing to obey it, it isn't going to do you one whit of good. Or if you pick up the Bible and read it and you want to interpret it your way, you'll never understand it. That's why we have the 14 rules of Bible study right here on Church at Home. You can go there and download it. And you can see how the Bible shows us we need to understand to realize how to read and study the Bible. And I'll give you one major key. If what you read and you understand and you will not obey, you have just closed your eyes. You have just stopped your ears. Verse 11 says, And division of all has become to you like the words of a book that is sealed, which they give to one who is learned, saying, Please read this. And he says, I cannot, for it's sealed. That's what they say about the book of Revelation. And the book is delivered to him who is not learned, saying, Please read this. And he says, I'm not learned. How do you expect me to read this? Okay. Does this not apply to Christianity today? Think about it. Catholics claim to be Christian. Are they? Protestants claim to be Christians better than Catholics. Are they? Evangelicals claim that they're better Christians than fundamentalists. Are they? Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Are you willing to do that? Are you willing to believe the word of God? Are you willing to believe Jesus? Well, if you're not, how can you become a Christian? Oh, well, I practice some Christian principles. How is it? 92% of the people say they believe in God, and yet they live in sin. Here's why. Verse 13, and the Lord said, because this people draws near me with their mouth. Oh, yes, Lord, bless us. And with their lips honor me. But their worship is made up of the traditions of men learned by rote, and their fear toward me is taught by the commandments of men, having nothing to do with God. Do you truly believe God? Do you truly believe his word? Do you really believe the Lord Jesus Christ? Have you proved the Bible to be true? You need to, because that's the only way you're going to understand it. Now, verse 14, this is why Jesus said what he said. This is why people don't understand. Therefore, behold, I will proceed to do again a marvelous work among this people, even a marvelous work and a wonder, for the wisdom of the wise ones shall perish, and the wisdom of their intelligent ones shall vanish. Why do you think the world is in such trouble? Why do you think America is in such trouble? Because we claim God and reject him. We demand the truth of everyone, but we lie. We demand morality, and yet we all flock to the internet to watch pornography and sexting one another. I wonder why on earth everything in this world, and especially in America, is going to hell in a handbasket, if I could use the terminology. Have we not learned enough? With denying God, disobeying him, how many tornadoes do we need? How many hurricanes do we need? How many droughts do we need? How many loss of young men in wars do we need to learn to understand that we can't make things right our way? Likewise, with who's a Christian? You're not going to be a Christian your way. The only way anyone's going to be a Christian is Christ's way. So let's read on. Woe to those who go deep to hide their purpose from the Lord, and their works are in the dark, and they say, Who sees? Who knows us? Surely you have turned things upside down. And that's where we are. That's why a lot of people may not like what I'm saying. But if I speak the truth and you prove it to be the truth, 
Should you not listen? Do you want to be a, a true Christian or not? Let's come back to Matthew, the 13th chapter, and let's go on here because this is very instructive. There are true Christians on the earth, and there are those who truly love God with all their heart, mind, and soul and being. There are those who want to serve God, do His will, live by every word of God, live in the grace of God, have the blessing of God, have the understanding that's given by Christ. See, we have to realize today is not the only day of salvation. Now, we'll cover that in future segments. But Matthew 13 and verse 11, Jesus said to them, Because it has been given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it has not been given. See, that understanding has to come from God. That is a spiritual understanding, and that comes from God's Spirit, and that comes from loving God and serving Him and willing to obey God the Father and Jesus Christ under all circumstances, everywhere at all times. Now, notice what will happen. For whoever has understanding to him shall more be given, and he shall have an abundance. But whoever does not have understanding, even what he has shall be taken from him. That's why he spoke to them in parables. And don't we see this? How many people are going to follow along and believe the things written by God, see, in a book called, Is God a Christian? And they'll be deluded in their faith. They will give up on God. They will reject the Bible and go further into the satanic world that is around us. And how about the children who have been nourished on socialism? How about those that you can't even bring a Bible to school? You see where we are? You see what is happening? You understand how we're rejecting God as a nation? And then people wonder, well, who is a true Christian? Well, there are some. We will see that in, in future segments here. And we'll answer the question, how do you become one? Now, Let's come to Matthew, the eighth chapter, and let's see some incredible sayings of Jesus. All who come to Jesus who are heavy laden and need to be forgiven will be with repentance. Now, notice what Jesus said. Verse 19, And a certain scribe came to him and said, Master, I will follow you wherever you go. What did Jesus say? Did he say, oh, that's good. I love that. I'm glad you're going to follow me. No, because he knew that the scribe wanted to do it his way, not Christ's way. So Jesus said to him, foxes have holes and birds of heaven have nests, but the Son of Man has no place to lay his head. And another of his disciples said to him, Lord, allow me first to go bury my father. Well, that's noble. People would have thought, well, I'll go with you. No, what did Jesus answer? He said, follow me and leave the dead to bury their own dead. Question, are you ready to truly follow Jesus, the Jesus of the Bible, the Jesus of the New Testament? Are you? Are you willing to forsake your way and repent of your ways and repent of your religion, though you think it's Christian, and truly embrace the truth? Now, those are things you're going to have to ask yourself, because only you know your own circumstances. And this is why we have church at home, because you can't have conversations like this in all of the Sunday-keeping churches, they won't allow it. So it has to be asked, in church at home, in your own home, that you come before God, that you control the circumstances, that you can prove the truth from your own Bible. So we're going to continue with these segments in this series. Who is a true Christian, and how does one become a Christian, and what has happened in the world to change it? These are vital things for us to understand. Now, we have a great many sermons on our other website, cbcg.org. 
There we have hundreds of sermons, hundreds of videos going in depth to every aspect of the Bible. And there's one series I want you to go through. It's called The Love of God. Now, that's an extended series. So if you're really serious about the truth and really serious about Christianity, I invite you to do that. So once again, this is Fred Calder saying, thank you for inviting me into your home. Until next time, so long, everyone.